Hey guys, welcome back to Kelly's Creations. I'm so glad you're here. I appreciate you all and I'm just so happy you joined me today. So, I've had a few requests for some mini cutting boards. I had a package that we got delivered and it came with this awesome cardboard that I've been dying to use. I love how thick this is. Now, I'm going in order of least favorite to most favorite cutting board here. <laughs> so we're going to start with the least favorite. This was my inspiration. Just odd shaped, not perfect at all, rustic miniature cutting board. So I thought, well, let's grab this cardboard piece that I've been dying to use and see if I could make a little cutting board out of this. I like this because it was thick and I wanted this cutting board to be thick. I didn't want to just use popsicle sticks and keep having to add tons of popsicle sticks. I had this on hand, but as always, with all of these creations, you make it your own. I'm sure you'll have ideas you might take from my suggestions and add your great ideas to it and just make it your own. Now, today was a very rainy day, thunderstorms galore, and my big scissors were out in the camper, <laughs> so I had to use those little ones. So I cut it out the best I could with those little ones. Now, remember, this doesn't have to be the perfectly shaped cutting board. That's what's great about rustic farmhouse country, is it doesn't have to be perfect. So I thought if I use some spackle, I could fill in that thick gap on the cardboard, set it aside to dry, come back the next day and sand it. And look at my newest little tool from Hobby Lobby, a little hammer and you undo the bottom and it's screwdrivers. So cute. I just wanted to share. So I took some sandpaper and I went around this, just sanding it. It still was flexible so I could kind of push it in with my fingers and maneuver it the way I wanted it to look and just keep sanding until I had somewhat of a cutting board shape that I was kind of happy with. <laughs> then I took my little pokey tool and I poked out that little hole. Now, I just didn't like the way the top was on this, so I ended up removing the back of just the top. Um, it was too thick up there. I thought it looked better with it off. Like I said at the beginning, we're going least favorite to favorite. But you know what? I always, even though I might not like a project or something that I've done, and I'm totally honest with you guys, if I don't like something I did, you guys might like it or have a better way of doing it. So I always include it, even if it wasn't one of my favorites. It still sort of came out cute at the end. <laughs> okay, using some coffee bean, I came in and I just painted the whole thing. Like I said, I wanted rustic country. So I came in with my black acrylic. I kind of went around the top while it was still wet, trying to mimic that um, inspiration piece and then I did just come around the edges and I put a little bit of black in the middle of this as well to give it that kind of burnt looking rustic country. This does look like a miniature cutting board um, but when you see the other two you'll understand why out of the three this was my least favorite. I keep saying that. <laughs> I don't want to discourage you guys from watching or anything. <laughs> I just thought, eh, attempt number one at a cutting board, eh, it's okay. <laughs> so I love these rustic country cutting boards with the light and the dark wood. So I thought that would be my next attempt at creating a mini one using scrapple pieces. <laughs> I was racking my brain trying to think what could I use um, to make these little mini cutting boards. And y'all know I have a ton of scrapple pieces. So I took six, I added a generous amount of wood glue, and I just made sure that it was coated all over the six pieces. Then I came back in with another six pieces and put those on top of it. I'm trying to make kind of a solid wood piece using scrapple pieces. So then I set that aside to dry and came back the next day to start sanding it. 
For it to dry, I put it on some wax paper because I was hoping the wood glue would not stick to that. The next day I came back and voila, I had a solid wood piece. <laughs> so I used a sanding disc from my husband's electric sander and I just sanded the edges trying to make this one cohesive wood piece, nice and smooth. Then I even came and I rounded the corners. I didn't want this perfect, like I said, Rustic Country to me is not perfect whatsoever. So I was just rounding the edges. Then I came back in with us, um, I think 120, I have it sitting right in front of me, 3M 120 medium sandpaper. And I sanded the whole piece again. Really made it nice and smooth. And I know I, you could see the lines, but I just was trying to hide them as best as possible. I watered down some coffee bean acrylic paint and I'm just going to come in and I'm going to give this whole piece a nice coat of that watered down acrylic. When you first start painting with it, it really looks dark, but once it dries, it dries much lighter with it being watered down than it looks. So while it was still wet, I picked the side that I wanted and I came back in with that 120 CM paper and I sanded over it while it was still wet. I thought maybe by doing that, I could have some parts of it that were much lighter than others just to give it that effect that it's been around forever. <laughs> and then once that was done, I could start doing my lines. So I used my heat gun and you can see it just get lighter and lighter and lighter. And that's the color I wanted. So I used some painter's tape to tape off my lines. Um, you'll see that I, I was just eyeballing it. So one line was actually a little bit thicker than the other line. So I just came back in and made the other line thicker. And that was my version of the mini little cutting board for my inspiration. Once I had my darker lines on it, I came back in with that coffee bean that I had watered down and I just went around the edges to kind of bring it all together. It's so stinking cute. It's so tiny and it's just a little mini version of that cutting board that we see all over the place with those with the light wood and the dark lines. And there it is. This one I liked better than the first one. Now the next one is, is my favorite out of all the DIYs. And here's the inspiration for cutting board number three. I love this Rustic Country cutting board. Using the smallest little picture frame from Dollar Tree. <laughs> and I needed... I used the picture frame because I, I love the shape. This is the size I wanted. And... I didn't want to, like I said in the first DIY, have to use a gazillion million popsicle sticks to achieve the size. <laughs> so I thought I had this little picture frame on hand. Why not utilize it? And I will use popsicle sticks, a smaller set and a larger set to frame this. 
So I just cut some printer paper and hot glued it to the center so that the back of this would be flush. And there's probably a better way to do this. I had my printer paper on hand, so I just used it. And I filled it in until the back was nice and flush. And then I'm going to grab some bigger popsicle sticks or craft sticks and some smaller ones. The bigger ones are going to be the um, front and the back. The smaller ones are going to be the sides. But at the time, time of doing the video, at this part of it at least, measuring them, I was going to use all small ones to do the whole thing. That's why you see me measuring right now. But... They did not cover it, and I would have had to cut one of them in half, which I didn't want to do. So I went my stash, and I grabbed my larger ones. As you can see right here, the picture frame hangs off the edge. I didn't want that. So I grabbed my larger craft sticks, and I'm like, yeah, okay, this is turning out how I want it. I'm so excited until I got to the final stick, and I was short one. <laughs> you need six of these and I didn't have enough so what I did is improvise and you can see that I'm cutting off um, the pieces I just used some of those and I spliced that last piece together and it was gonna be the back of it anyway and nobody sees the back of a project right so it's okay <laughs> if you're gonna cheat do it on the back right so you'll see me splicing two together to make this work. So now that they're cut, I'm going to come back in with some hot glue and put hot glue all over this. And I thought hot glue would work probably the best at holding it. And I'm not sure if probably, I mean, E6000, you would have to wait. Hot glue is a easy, quick, per, not permanent, but easy, quick way of putting these on. There's what I wanted to say. So the big ones, like I said, I put on the front and I put on the back. And the smaller ones, I came in and I framed the sides with them. Okay, so I'm going to correct what I said. I needed nine, and I only had eight, not six. <laughs> because the back of it, when I framed this, um, the frame stuck out a little bit longer. So if I put three more of these, it was a lot more flush. So that's why you need nine popsicle sticks, and I only had eight. So now you're going to see me fill in that gap with these three. And I'm just taking popsicle sticks, the larger ones, hot gluing them right on top of the existing ones I had, and that gets it closer to my frame. And I just wanted to correct myself because sometimes when um, I'm doing my voiceover, I forget exactly how many I used. <laughs> so, plus I'm old. So just, you know, give me some slack here. Anyway, now I'm going to come in and I'm going to start sanding. And I love using my husband's little sanding disc off his electric sander because it's heavy duty and it doesn't take a lot of oomph to get it sanded. <laughs> now I save my sawdust and I've showed you this before. If you take some wood glue and put some sawdust in like the corners or if you have a gap, this works perfectly. Um, it blends it in once it dries and it really like ties the piece in together so you don't have any gaps. So just hang on to that sawdust because it works really well.
So once my little sawdust corners were dry, I came back in with that disc again and I sanded a little bit around the corners. I sanded it again to make sure that all sides were flush with the framing. Then I came back in with that 120 medium and went over the whole piece again to make it nice and smooth. I had some of these silver straws. You can pretty much use any straw. Um, my friends are so cute. They'll buy stuff for parties or, you know, even like they're saving me toothpaste caps now that I'm doing minis. Like, it's so cute. So they'll just be like, can you use this for your craft room? And I don't turn anything away because I can always use it for something. And my girlfriend gave me some of these silver straws, which are perfect for the handle on this. So I just trimmed them the length and then set them down with my Cricut or Silhouette Cameo tool, came back in and really flattened them out. Really pushed hard to make sure that they were super flat. I came back in with some black acrylic paint and I painted both sides of these straws and set them aside to dry. The great thing about painting these silver straws is they resemble metal. So the acrylic paint when um it kind it doesn't fully cover it you can see like the silver come through which i was totally fine with because to me that looked like rusted or rustic metal so that was great now you will see me later on when i attach these some of the paint does come off but that's easily fixed with just coming back in with your paintbrush and just tapping where some of that got removed from the straws so we're going to set those handles aside and we're going to come back in with that same coffee bean paint that I had watered down. And I'm going to paint the whole little um, cotton board. All of the sides. And just like the other one, it will dry a little bit lighter. So I want this to be darker because I really, really wanted this to be more rustic country. So I came back in with my coffee bean and I just highlighted the edges and came back in with my little sponge brush that already had the water down and went over it. Then I came in with some black acrylic and did the same thing until I had that desired real deep dark rustic country look. I love the way this cutting board is turning out. Who would have known? I started with a picture frame. How crazy is that? <laughs> so now I'm going to take my straws and I'm just going to bend them to have a little lip on each end. Once I have one the way I like it, I use that as a template to bend my other one. No, they're not perfect. No, they're probably not even the same size, but they're close. And that's all I was shooting for. And once I had it that way, I put a little dab of hot glue on either end and I hot glued those to the side of the cotton board. Starting to look just like my inspiration picture. I'm loving this. So we're going to take it one step further. Like I said, if some of the paint comes off those straws, you just take your black paint and touch it up. So I showed you these before, but I got these stencils from Dollar John Raw. You get 13 mini stencils. And they are adorable and perfect for mini decor. So I'm going to put the word gather on this cutting board and I'm just going to position it where I want. Use a little painter's tape to hold it in place and I'm going to come in with some Waverly and Cashew and just dab it. I don't want perfect lines. I don't want it totally covered either. I want it just dabbed on. You do it the way you want. If you want it like a perfect word, then you'll just need to add more paint. And then I always pull it off before it dries. Oh, I love this. Look at that. Oh, it's so stinking cute. This one is my favorite. 
and I think it resembles it. I love the word grateful on it, and it's so cute. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. People have been asking me for cutting boards, so I thought I would try to think outside the box and find you a way to make them for you. If you enjoyed it, please like this video, share it with your friends, and let me know in the comments below which one was your favorite. I love y'all. I hope you're having a blessed and wonderful day, and I'll see you again soon. Bye, y'all.